Alright guys, so uh, Fool coming to you with another video. Shout out to the whole LDBC. Uh, if you like this video, please feel free to uh, up like the video. And if you uh, like the content in which this uh, channel holds, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. Um, now, there was a boxing uh, media publication. And they said something that was pretty surprising. Uh, you know, well, maybe not so surprising, but it was just kind of surprising that he would come out and say what he said. But, you know, it appears that the Canelo Kovalev fight indeed was a money grabbing fight for Sergey Kovalev. Sergey Kovalev has came out and said that, you know, the reason why he fought Canelo was for the bag. That it was impossible to win under the circumstances in which he was in. And while I won't say it was impossible to win, it, 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 it was pretty difficult to win. Due to the simple fact that that fight with Anthony Yard took a lot out of him. And the, the fact of the matter is, Canelo, I mean, uh, Kovalev did not have a full training camp for this Canelo fight. He only had a three-week camp, you know. And, you know, the Anthony Yard fight, that fight was a very, very tough fight. And, you know, three, year, uh, three uh, weeks is not enough to really be ready for the Canelo fight. Now, this, this comes as a shock for the simple fact that, you know, the, the, the publication, I believe it was Boxing News 24, I think that's the, the name of it, Boxing News 24, you know, they showed no filters when it came to Canelo, man. Like, they, they showed none at all. I mean, they even went as far as to say that it was indeed a cherry pick, man. They said that, you know, now that the news has came out, that, you know, the elephant in the room is out, that indeed Kovalev fought for money, that, you know, the, the win that Canelo has is now, like, like it's, it, it's a win is a win, but it's not an impressive win. You know, this boxing public, publication even said that you know, Canelo was in danger of losing the fight, you know, and they went on to say that, you know, Canelo didn't really even look impressive, you know, that's what they said about this fight, um, now, on the flip side of that, man, they said that, you know, Sergey Kovalev, he said that he spent sleepless nights deciding about this fight, you know. Word is that he got a person 12 million from this fight, you know. And so he was like, I guess, at odds with himself on whether to take the fight due to the fact that he, uh, you know, wouldn't have a full camp to prepare. I mean, let's be honest, like, that was strategic, uh, what, you know, Canelo was doing, man, it was strategic, he knew he had a hard fight uh, with uh, Anthony Yard, and he figured that, you know, you get him now, you know, he's tired, he's, uh, you know, on his last leg, and so, another thing that needs to be said, too, is that, you know, the question needs to be asked now, you know, I don't know how we can, like, really gauge this, but the question that really needs to be asked now is, you know, Sergey Kovalev said he couldn't sit on punches. The real question is, is it that he couldn't sit on punches or he didn't want to sit on punches? You know, the thing is, is this. This publication even said that, you know, Sergey Kovalev has 
one of the best jabs in the light heavyweight division. That his jab was like a piston shotgun jab. You know, that's what he, that's what uh, they said. And you know, when you look at it, it, it looked like the, the jab that Kovalev was throwing was a love tap. And one thing that was about Kovalev that I know to be the case from his previous fights, I mean, and I'm not a Kovalev fan by any means, okay? I do not like Kovalev. I think he's, I mean, he can fight. He's a hell of a fighter, but I, I am not a Kovalev fan. But when you watch his previous fights, things that he usually does, he was not doing in this fight. So one thing I want to say is that with this fight, Kovalev uh, did not... Uh, was not active with his footwork. You know, usually Kovalev is on his toes, back and forth, shifting weight. And usually his footwork is, you know, it's not the best footwork, but he usually has some decent footwork. Now, one thing I want to say about this is that that wasn't there. He was rather flat-footed. And one thing I noticed as well is that he put all his weight on the front foot. Like when he was throwing a jab, it was like almost he was leaning into it for some reason. You know, he barely threw a one-two. You know? So it's like, it's like, when you look at this, it's like, The, the the proof is in the pudding now. You know, he's telling you that he took the fight for financial reasons. I mean, the publication also said that, you know, if Kovalev fought the way he fought against Anthony Yard, then Canelo would be in a lot of trouble. That Canelo would more than likely lose that fight, you know? And I can say that maybe perhaps it would be a tie or something like that, you know? But other than that, you know, he, you know, Canelo knew what he was doing, man. The bottom line is he knew, he knew that, you know, he was on his last, that Kovalev was on his last leg. Kovalev has hella legal problems right now. And so this nice little chunk of change will help him get out of these legal troubles, okay? Now, there's something I want to say about this whole thing. We all know that many people call out Canelo. We all know that. Everybody calls out Canelo, basically people from different weight classes call him out now the thing is is this this is my question and this is my question for all the boxers out there in the professional ranks who may listen to this video you know I have a real serious question and please answer it sincerely okay I need a, uh, I need a legit answer Please do not beat around the bush. To all you guys in the pro ranks who may hear this video, how many of you guys will actually want to beat Canelo? How many of you guys will actually want to not just chase a bag, but chase the legacy? Chase the legacy of beating one of the top guys chase the legacy of putting a second dent on this record. Chase the legacy of outclassing him. Chase the legacy of maybe putting on a clinic, a Mayweather-like clinic. That's my real question. Because the only guy I can really say that wants to do that 
Of course he wants the prize money that comes with it. Everybody wants that. The prize money that comes, right? The guy who I think wants that is no other than Demetrius Bugatti Andrade. And I say that because he's been calling him out for the longest. He's been calling him out at 154. Uh, you know, this is the thing, man. Uh, at 154, he wanted to clean out the division. You know, he wanted to, he wanted to like, just clean out the vi division and move up to uh, 160 before he, but he had, like, he was really pressed for fights, and so he had to move up to 160, and he fought the dude, Alantes Fox. You know, due to the simple fact he was pressed for having fights, you know. Um, so, you know, with this being said, I think that, you know, because, I look, this is my thing. It's not just Canelo he's calling out. He's been calling out other dudes. So, I don't think it's just for money. I think he just is looking for his chance. He told Triple G, let me, give me the chance to be great. You know, he's like, you had your chance, let me get my chance to be great. And that fight, again, is easy to make. Unification. Both fight on the zone. Both are semi under the same person. You know, I think uh, Triple G is getting help by Eddie Hearn, you know. But yeah, this is just the way it goes. So, you know, a lot of Canelo fans want to give, like, Canelo all the praise in the world, want to, like, put him on a pedestal. And the reason why they do it is because of the simple fact that he has the nationality behind him. I mean, I, I honestly believe, this is in my heart of hearts, I honestly believe that most Canelo fans are not really fans of the boxing as a sport as a whole. I honestly believe that, like, I would say like a good 90% of Canelo fans are just sticking with him just due to the nationality. You know, in which he possesses. You know, me, you know, everybody knows this channel is like pro Demetrius Andrade, but it's also pro other fighters as well. You know, it's pro Bivol, it's pro uh, Better Beef, it's pro other things. And of course, I'm going to put Demetrius Andrade uh, up there, you know, because we're both K Verdians, you know. We both have uh, roots in K Verdian. So, you know, that's that's just what it is, you know. It, it's okay to support your countryman, but if your countryman is doing faulty stuff, then, you know, you can't really roll with that. Like, for example, like when Demetrius Andrade, you know, had the whole situation with the Charlos and the Rock Nation thing, I just said, dang, man, I wish he never really would have made that mistake. You know, I wish he would have, like, just, like, skipped the Rock Nation thing and, uh, and fought Charlo, you know? Same thing with the Eddie Hearn. I was like, I was like, dang, man, I wish he didn't sign with Eddie Hearn. I made a video about this, you know what I mean? That's still my guy. Don't get it twisted. That's still my guy, but, you know, I'm not going to just be a yes man, you know? But that's what most Canelo fans are, yes men. You know, that's why, like, when he got caught on the PEDs, they gave him a pass. When he got the franchise championship, they gave him a pass. Uh, when he fought Cotto over the hill, they gave him a pass. When he fought Sugar Shane Mosley over the hill, they gave him a pass. And when he fought Rocky Fielding, they gave him a pass. And when, they, when he fought... Um, and now they're giving him a pass for fighting Kovalev, who is definitely over the hill, and who did not have a full training camp to even get ready for this fight, 
but was pressed for cash. He has came out and said it. And with that being said, you know, um, you can call Canelo pound for pound number one all you want to. Uh, you know, it, pound for pound number one is objective. Uh, if you want to go based off a resume, sure, you can call them pound for pound number one. But let's be honest, in that resume, how many of those people did he beat convincingly? Uh, I would say that he beat Triple G convincingly. And I repeat this on a lot of my uh, videos, but when it comes to the close, when it comes to uh, elite level opposition, Canelo does not look that well. I mean, the Daniel Jacobs fight, you can definitely say it was a tie. Um, the Austin Trout fight, you can even say it was a try. Uh, the Aris Landy Laura fight, you can definitely say Aris Landy Laura box circles and won that fight. But of course, he didn't get the nod for obvious reasons. And, you know, you can also say that, that the Miguel Cotto scoring was also pretty wide as well and that even another fellow Hispanic fighter Mikey Garcia actually had Cotto winning the fight you know but with that being said man that's all I really got for now man leave your thoughts and leave your comments you know at the end of the day I'm not going to I mean I give respect where respect is due uh, I think Canelo is a decent fighter uh, I think he has some good wrinkles to his game, but he's not one of my favorite fighters. Uh, styles make fights, and some people are, are attracted to certain fighters. Me, I'm not attracted to flat-footed fighters that much. Uh, yeah, I'm also not in, attracted to just fighters who come forward and don't know how to do anything else but come forward and you know, pretty much, you know, stay stationary, and I'm not attracted, and I'm not into, like, fighters who basically want you to stand in front of them in order for you to get off on them, in order for them to get off on you, and so that means Canelo will be exempt from one of my favorite type of fighters, you know. And, you know, it, it just so, I mean, I'm just going to be keeping funky. It just so happens that, you know, black fighters have those traits, have the characteristics of, like, footwork, um, changing levels, and, uh, you know, educated jabs, using uh, movement to to make some good things happen, you know, slick, so yeah, these are my things, you know, and it's just, it is what it is, you know, uh, one fighter who, who really kind of, one fighter who really kind of, like, was the poster boy for this, you know, he was kind of like the, 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 the blueprint for me was uh, Roberto Duran because a lot of people just get, get it twisted that Roberto Duran was this kind of like brawler, you know, that he would just be like this brawler, uh, you know, and that he would just come forward and just maul you. But Roberto Duran was one of the slickest, most technically sound boxers I've ever seen in my life. You know, and so with that being said, I like fighters like that who are versatile. And I'm afraid that Canelo ain't versatile. It is what it is. Fool of signing out. Leave your thoughts and leave your comments. Good job, Amo.